and welcome to another Barn concert. This is our seventh in the series and tonight we will be celebrating the music of the amazing Gus Gowland. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting Gus two years ago at the Stage Awards, at the Stage Debut Awards, where he picked up a, uh, a win for the best composer or lyricist. Um, Tonight, obviously, these series are to celebrate the music of new writers, to uh, celebrate the performers that have helped us on this, and to also help keep the barn afloat during this hard uh, period of time. If you'd like to donate, you can do on the screen, or you can visit our website, which is www.barntheatre.org.uk forward slash SOB. So let's get going and uh, I want to introduce you all to Gus. Gus, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, it's a pleasure to be here. No, absolutely my pleasure, a pleasure is all ours and um, how, how have things been obviously since we last kind of saw each other which was the debut awards and I saw you walking up to <laughs> get your award, how, how, how have the last two years been? Uh, bonkers, um, yeah I mean really good, uh, Pieces of String was an amazing experience, like a wild ride. I spent a long time writing it, and, and so it was just a joy for it to get to the stage because it's not easy to get anything on a stage at the best of times. Um, so it was just a crazy, wonderful, like whirlwind experience. And then I've been doing a PhD, so I sort of went from that crazy whirlwind into academia and writing a thesis and... Uh, Thankfully, that is all over now. <laughs> what, what on earth have you been doing your PhD on? Musical theatre, obviously. Of course. Um, so my, my PhD was uh, about um, gay representation in musical theatre. It was practice-based, so half of it was a show for which I used pieces of string. And it was looking at how gay men specifically have been represented in musicals and whether it was possible to do things differently from how they've been done before. Um, it was a really interesting journey. It was really hard work, um, but I'm very glad that I did it and that it's done now. <laughs> so do we now need to start calling you Dr. Gus? I mean, I am Dr. Gus, but... Um, That's great. Yeah. That's brilliant. I know. It was, it was crazy. I, I did my Viva, which is the sort of verbal exam where you have to defend your thesis. I did that just before lockdown. And then I had to do some corrections, which is just fixing some referencing things in the thesis, which is much more laborious than it should be. And then um, I found out at the beginning of July that, um, that I finally got it. So it that's sort of incredible. happened during this strange time. Wow, that's, at least that's some kind of positive news coming from it. And like, doctor, that must be great. Uh, yeah, real. Well, yeah. congratulations, obviously, on, on becoming you. a doctor. Um, and uh, so what about, um, obviously, this concert, we've been putting it together for a couple, well, months now. And um, uh, what, just to give everyone a bit of a hint, what, uh, what should people expect from what they're going to be hearing tonight? Um, they're going to hear some great songs. I hope people agree. Um, there's a good mixture of, there's a couple of pieces of string songs in there, one of which hasn't really been heard outside of the show. So I'm really excited for people to hear that song. Um, and then some songs for some new shows that I'm working on, one called Candidates, which is a um, adaptation of Much Do About Nothing, set in a high school election, um, and has a much more poppy feel. And then I'm writing a song cycle um, telling positive LGBTQ plus stories and I've got a couple of songs Maybe. from that in it so a good mix of the work that I've been doing over the, the last couple of years. Great brilliant well let's the start we've got our first guest which is uh, the incredible Gabriella Garcia so let's uh, let's welcome Gabriella. Gabriella thank you for joining us H how have you been H how's the last couple of months been for you? Yeah actually not too bad I've been really lucky um just came back from a seven month break traveling and wow. started um, two days rehearsals for West Side Story and then lockdown happened. Um, so I was really ready to start working and start creating again. Um, but then again, I hadn't been home in a while. So I'm really enjoying kind of this like, it's like a nesting period, isn't it? All the books that I hadn't read, um, I'm trying to get through them. Uh, not as fast as I'd like to, but, oh, but it's I, I, obviously, everyone knows obviously about Roy Exchange, and obviously um, you were supposed to be starting there, which is obviously gutting. And everyone has got their fingers crossed, toes crossed, arms crossed, eyelids crossed 
that uh, <laughs> we'll be seeing you on that stage very soon. But um, what I want to hear is where did you go traveling? Like every, everyone's got travel envy right now because no one can go anywhere. So I want to know where you went. We got so lucky. Um, we went uh, mainly, we were mainly in Mexico. I'm originally from Mexico. Um, and I've had this like traveling bug of actually visiting my country as a whole um, to really, you know, only when you leave your country, you realize, oh my God, what a great place it is. And you start like being even more proud to where, where you're from than before. I feel like, uh, as a teenager, I kind of, I was like, yeah, we've got pyramids, whatever. We've got good food, whatever. And now that I don't have like that spicy food and, and the pyramids and that history and that color, I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. The same thing happens when I go back to Mexico, like traveling. I was like, oh my God, I love London. Oh, I'm <laughs> you know, you start like really. Yeah, of course. Um, so we went traveling around Mexico and we did a, a few parts of South America as well. We went to Colombia, um, which was incredible. And so I'm jealous. sister as well in the US. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I know what I'm doing when I uh, can leave the house again. <laughs> um, but uh, so now, obviously, we're, we're back and obviously, we're, we're singing some songs. We're singing some of Gus's songs. How did you find singing this? You, you've been obviously uh, partnered with the like beyond incredible Sandra Marvin. How, how's, how's, that, how's that been? I know. I mean, I didn't really get to sing with Sandra. That was that was a bit gutting. I was like, oh God, I wish we had that coll collaborative. Yeah. Um, but hopefully we can have that in person at some point. Um, but I feel like I did have that with Gus though. I feel like from the from the get go, it was very like, you know, hey, what do you think of these lyrics? They're in Spanish. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. They're great. Oh my God. Like it, 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 from the get go, I got really excited. Um, by singing something different and something new. And then Gus introduced me to this story, which is based on a true story that I had no idea about. And once I started researching, I was like, oh my God, as if this is real. Uh, <laughs> really, really cool story. Um, inspiring as well. I just, it, it's, um, I was a bit disappointed that, that I didn't know anything about it. Um, but no, it was pretty really cool. That's the beauty of these kind of uh, song cycles and concerts is the fact that you end up learning about something that you wouldn't ever have the chance to learn about. And that's one thing I think is so key about this whole kind of experience, this whole lockdown COVID experience is the fact of, like you said, about reading those books that you haven't had a chance to read. People are having the chance to learn things, develop things and, and do things that they usually wouldn't have the chance to do, which I think is one huge positive that has come out of this. Um, yeah. And, and, and the fact that um, Gus or and, and you, Jamie, giving us a deadline to be like, okay, so can we do this by by this this date? That gave me a bit of a okay, okay, so we can, you know, it, it gives you it gives you a purpose in lockdown, doesn't it? And and it's a yeah. it's hard to get inspired when you don't know what's happening in the future and you know why am i singing if i don't know if i'll be able to you know you start asking all these questions but actually having this opportunity to explore new material now to be ready when we're you know the industry is back it's yeah it was it was really cool i'm no. very inspired still and it was hard <laughs> it was a hard <laughs> song like I, i'd go i went like that because i would email us and be like so what do you think this is kind of like my first attempt but you know you know, in hope that maybe guys would be like, oh, we can bring it down a tone or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then I'd be like, oh, God, oh, oh God, this is hard. But it, it, sat, it sat in a hard place for my voice, I found, but in the right place for the character. Like, she feels sure. uncomfortable. She's, you know, like, this whole, oh, it's just great. So, Gus, you've been evil basically in in terms of where you've set this for a singer so uh, where, why didn't you obviously this isn't the only song we're going to be hearing of the next couple songs but so why don't you tell us a little bit about uh this song and the the other two songs we're going to hear um great well um by the way i just want to say first of all that every version that gabriella sent to me was astonishing um uh and it's been a thrill to work with you on this gabby thank you so much um and i hope it's the beginning yeah um, so Little Bird is um, from the Red Virgin and it's uh, a sort of argument between Hildegard and her mother Aurora and it's the first time in the show that we get to see Hildegard starting to 
express that she wants something more than just the learning and the education and what basically her mother has instructed her to do. And so she's starting to set herself free and, and want more. And her mother is starting to see the cracks that appear that we see later in the song, The Sculptor, and starting to want to rein her in even more. And, and, and so that's what this song is. And it's a back and forth between them. Um, and then the next song that we have is All Fury, No Sound. And this was written for a version of Hamlet that I was writing um, for Theatre Royal Stratford East, which never happened as things happen in the world of theatre. Um, but it's a song I'm really proud of. And it's essentially, it's the second, or the, the, the second scene of Hamlet or the first soliloquy he does, all that that um, tutu solid flesh would melt. It's essentially that moment turned into a song that's set in a contemporary world. It's quite poppy, um, as Hamlet is, or the Hamlet equivalent is watching his family um, mourn his father and, and not happy about what his mother and uncle are doing. Um, and then the third song, is, the, third, the other song is Blindsided, which is from a show called Candidates, which is my adaptation of Much Ado About Nothing. Um, and it's sung by the brilliant Craig Mather, and he is... Uh, he was in Pieces of String for me, and we're currently actually working together on an EP of original songs. He's writing the music and I'm writing the lyrics. And so I wanted him to do a version of this song that was him and his guitar, much more singer-songwriter feel, because he's so brilliant at that. So this is a really lovely interpretation of Blindsided. Amazing. Well, I, I know I'm excited, so uh, let's get this concert kind of kicked off. And uh, Gabriella, would you do us the honour of uh, introducing the next three songs? Um, so the next song is Blindsided by Craig Mather. Um, the song after that is Little Bird, sung by myself. And the last song is All Fury, No Sound, sung by Kieran Patel. <laughs> Oh. 
to stone. My blood is boiling, but ice races through my veins, all twisted sinew and bone. But in my brain, the things I have known, like birds have flown, stand still, stand back, stay out of the fire if you can. Stand fast, stand firm. Remember, you're only one man. I've learned to. I'm only one man. I can't change the clock, so I will watch them ticking. I can't break the lock, so I will start the picking. I'll melt and thaw into the ground. I'll be all fury and no sound. I can't turn the tide, so I'll avoid the water. I can't save the hide, so send it to the slaughter. I'll melt and thaw into the ground. I'll be all fury and no sound. I am all fury without a sound. And I can see it now as he lies in the earth, already close to being forgotten. It's not the flesh beneath the mud beneath the turf. But the bodies outside the grave that are rotten. I can't stop the rain, so I will let it soak me. I can't stop the pain, so go ahead and choke me. I'll disappear into the ground. I'll be all fury and no sound. How to stop the thief and not destroy the mother? How to stop the before it starts to smother, I'll just disappear into the ground. I'll be all fury and no sound. I am all fury without a sound. So, next up we've got the incredible Imogen Halsey, who was uh, at the Barn Theatre live, oh, Miss Live Theatre, on the stage in just so a couple of years ago. And it's a pleasure to welcome her back. Imogen, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, absolutely our pleasure. And uh, thank you for recording this song. It sounds incredible. And I cannot wait for everyone to hear it. Um, how's it been? How's, how have you found recording and working in, in this new world we're in? Fine, actually. I don't mind the recording um, at home. I find I've got stuff to um, I do recording at home, so that's not really too much of an issue. I, I'm excited to hear it with the backing because I haven't heard it yet with the um, with the backing track. So I'm excited to hear what it sounds like all together. Well, that's the that's the magic of Gus. So uh, Gus, exactly. how, how have you, Gus? Actually, we haven't asked you yet. Gus, how have you found uh, working with obviously performers, but from a distance? Because he so everyone knows at home, none of the performers, everyone is still, we're still working in the current climate of uh, working from home. No one mixes, no duets mix. Everyone works in their own appropriate uh, abode. So Gus, how have you found working with performers, including Imogen, in this way? Um, it's been great. It's, people are so responsive. Everyone wants to do good work. So um, it's been sort of quite easy, I think, and working with people such as Imogen who, Imogen, who are so fabulous, um, and just get it done, you know? It's like, it's, it's, yeah, it's been brilliant. I was quite fortunate that at the beginning of lockdown, um, there were a few things recorded of mine, um, and I had people, amazing MDs, prepping for that. So I sort of learned from them what they sent to people when, they, when people needed to sing songs and was like, okay, you need to send all of these things and make sure you're giving the performer everything they need. Um, and so I feel like I've really skilled up in being like, I know exactly what I need to put in my email, what I need to attach so that you've got everything covered. Um, yeah, so it's been good. Amazing, brilliant. And uh, Imogen, what else, so obviously I haven't seen you in a, in a couple of years now, but what, what else have you been up to? What, what, what's during this, obviously this lockdown? This lockdown, this lockdown feels like it's been going on, well, it has been going on for ages now. And I'm trying to, I was just thinking back to what I did right at the start of the lockdown. But we finished um, eight years ago. We did, um, I wrote a musical with a friend and we took it up to the um, fringe. And we've just, in lockdown, we finished recording the album of that. So I just, I, I, that's how, what I started doing. I recorded the, um, the cello bits and some of the, um, 
the spoken bits from home and then since then um have started working with him on um uh, sort of my music so we've now kind of gone on from the we wrote a musical together but now we're working back together it's called michael um and we're working back together now on um some of my songs and that he's producing for me because he's going into um kind of steering into producing now so that's been really exciting and it's definitely given me the time to spend more time writing and now luckily with these new like restrictions we can record together which is really good so that's been my focus really for lockdown it's been it's been it's been it's been okay up and down but you know we're we're going with positives (laughs) yeah that's great we were literally we were literally just saying the fact that this time period the one kind of positive factor that has come out of it is being able to focus on things that you haven't been able to put the energy or time towards yeah yeah definitely i think a lot of um, my um friends in um who are kind of also musicians i work as a, a musician as well as an actor um and we've all lo- lots of us have kind of spent this time writing and now are uh, you know creating stuff which has been it's been really nice to, to see amazing well gus why don't you obviously we're going to be hearing four songs next why don't you tell us a little bit about those those four songs um yeah sure so uh, the first song is stuck on repeats which is from my show candidates uh, which is a version of Much Do About Nothing. Um, and in this song, Beatrice, or B Bea in my show, um, towards the end of the show, she's just fed up with the back and forth that she's had with the Ben Benedict equivalent. Um, and so this is her basically saying, we're just stuck on the feet and I've had enough of it. Um, the next song is The Girl Next Door, sung by the fabulous Imogen. And this is from my uh, LGBTQ plus song cycle. And it's a standalone song just about um, the object of affection that lives next door um, and pining for that person. Um, Then we've got Trick of the Light, which is from Pieces of String and is actually a song that hasn't really been out in the world apart from for the show. It's not one that I've had recorded before. So I'm really excited for that to to be heard by people that haven't seen the show yet. Um, And that comes at a pivotal moment when the character of Jane learns some secrets about her family in the past and and is about how that changes the way that she sees everything like it's a trick of the light suddenly things don't look the way that they did before uh, and then we have lifeboat uh which uh is possibly going to be in my lgbtq plus song cycle i'm not sure yet um but it's at the moment it's a standalone song which is just about really pertinent for now i think which is just about being there for someone and being their lifeboat and just saying, wherever you look, I'll be here to keep you afloat. Amazing. Well, I know I want to hear them. So uh, Imogen, could you do us the honours of uh, introducing the next four songs? So first up, we have Stuck on Repeat by, and that's sung by Charlotte Wakefield. Then we have The Girl Next Door, which is sung by myself. We have Trick of the Light, which is sung by Rebecca Gilliland. And then Lifeboat, which is sung by Michael Mather. You and me, we run in circles, an endless race that nobody wins. We play the parts like we're supposed to When one scene ends, another begins It's the same old song that we play along And we've learned the words by heart You antagonize and I harmonize Around we go And before we know We're right back at the start When the votes are cast And the counting's done And no one cares who's lost or won When the campaign's through And the signs come down And no one cares who wears the crown When everybody else admits defeat We're still stuck on repeat I don't know how we got here And I don't know We know the rules 
so we act like fools, scoring points wherever we can. You antagonize and I harmonize, around we go, and before we know, we're back where we began. When the votes are cast, and the counting's done, and no one cares who's lost or won. When the campaign's through, and the signs come down, and no one cares who wears the crown. When everybody else admits defeat, we're still stuck on a repeat. Every day the fight, every day the same, every day we play this stupid game. No one ever stops, no one ever knows, no one sees the bruises. We can laugh it off, we can hide the scars, and we've only got ourselves to blame. If I pull you down, if I push you lost or won when the campaign's through and the signs come down and no one cares who wears the crown when everybody else admits defeat we're still stuck on a I never thought I'd love someone like you I watch from afar and smile at what you do Like the way you fold your laundry As you take it from the line Oh how I wish that laundry was mine That doesn't mean I wish you'd do my chores I wish I was in those hands of yours Wish you could run me through your fingers How I long for your embrace If only I could tell you to your face When you moved in just last Sunday I thought one day I would hold you But I don't even know your name The girl next door it's beautiful to me, the girl next door. Oh, there's Sue and Pamela and Marie. If you pray up, pro Priscilla, come throw a girl on the rope. Until then, I've got to have hope. <laughs> I've spent hours trying to catch your eye. A sign in the window but you just walk on by so I'll love you from a distance cause for now it's all I've got oh how I wish that distance was not I went into the garden yesterday tried to get your attention across the fence I said you didn't hear me as I called your names in vain. I love you Wendy, Jess, Natalia or Jane. When you moved in just last Sunday, I felt one day we'd be lovers, but still I do not know your name. The girl next door. When the doorbell rang one morning And right before my eyes stood
whispered the girl next door. You said the most beautiful words I've ever heard. Now I'll never be the same. You said, if we're gonna go out, don't you think it's time? You knew my name. The girl next door. Now you're here, now my destiny is clear. is the house where a little girl was lonely she'd sit around for hours talking to the air worried she'd been naughty always feeling guilty the child that you made me in a heartbeat you betrayed me Out of shadows that weren't there before See how the light plays its tricks on me Painting pictures with memories That I don't want to see This is the room that my parents fought their wars in My mother shouting, screaming to be heard, father never moving, killing us with silence, my perfect little family in a heartbeat. Where's the heartbeat? This is the room they fought their wars in. Look how the light dances. I can see that you 
So next up, we have got the incredible Abigail Matthews. Some of you may recognize her from The Butterfly Lion, which was an incredible production at, on at the barn a couple of years ago. Um, but Abby, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. No, absolutely our pleasure. Um, how, how have you been? How's, how have you been during the last five months of weirdness? Well, um, very, very lucky, to be honest. Um, yeah, in a, in a good position in comparison to many and also... Uh, being kept busy by your good selves <laughs> doing all the different projects online which is just a dream yeah so thank you so much for providing that uh, and getting so much of our community uh, so many people in the community involved yeah no absolutely our pleasure I think you have been involved in more than most I think you've been involved in pretty much every single 
What have I that, done? So I was lucky to be in phase one of Barge yeah. from Plant. Yes, yeah, so that was the the hotspur. And then phase two was the duologues. So that was that was good. Um, really enjoyed that. And then phase three is yet to be seen, I believe. Yeah. It is. It is yet to be seen. seen. So we're, that one's in development, which is very exciting. Uh, and then this, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Feels oh, very amazing. Happy. And uh, obviously, before obviously we, went, we went live and started recording, this is obviously you and Gus have been speaking for a while regarding the song, but this is the first time you've actually seen each other face to face, or technically face to face, obviously via Zoom. But um, how, how's it been learning, uh, well, one, Gus's music during this time, and two, in this kind of format? How, how's it been? Well, uh, also feeling, uh, you know, kind of very lucky having everything sent through. Um, Charlotte Wakefield became my best audio friend uh, listening to her recording. Uh, she's marvellous anyway. Um, so it was lovely listening to her do the song and her interpretation. And then learning it, yeah, with the accompaniment and putting it together. It's a beautiful piece of music, Gus. So, yeah, really lovely thing to do. And such a compelling story as well. So researching it, I was like, wow, this is incredible. What, uh, it kind of terrifying and incredibly compelling at the same time. Yeah. Uh, so learning about um, Hildegard as a young person and everything she was able to do, especially as a young woman, as you, as you said. Um, but yeah, her mother, crikey, and what her psychological state was and that decision and the, the inner conflict between what she believes is completely right and the emotional um, draw of that as well. I think emotionally she's feeling something very different to what she intellectually thinks is right, so yeah. And uh, obviously this isn't the only song we're going to be uh, hearing next. Uh, there is um, uh, three songs in total. Gus, why don't you tell us a little bit about all three of these songs that we're about to hear? Okay, well, um, the sculptor is from a show called The Red Virgin, uh, which was the nickname given to uh, an extraordinary young woman True story, she lived in Spain at the beginning of the last century. She was called Hildegard Rodriguez. Rodriguez. And it's uh, the story of her and her mother, um, her, her mother Aurora. And basically her mother believed in eugenics and wanted to create the perfect person and just drilled her daughter in subjects. And it worked in that Hildegard became a child prodigy and spoke very eloquently and publicly about uh, women's rights at a time when um, that wasn't done. She was extraordinary. Um, but when she was 17, um, her mother shot and killed her. And when uh, Aurora was asked why she'd done this, um, her reply was, um, like any artist, when they see an imperfection in their work, they destroy it and start again. Um, which is astonishing. And so the song that Abby is singing so beautifully is called The Sculptor. And it's really that, that quote put into a lyric and into music and, and Aurora seeing her daughter as a, sculpt, a sculptor, as a, as a piece of art that has imperfections. Um, and then the next song is Via Reggio, which is a brand new song, never heard anywhere before. I'm really excited to share it. And it's from a new song cycle I'm writing, uh, which is uh, full of positive LGBTQ plus stories. So stories of um, queer love and of identification. Um, after writing pieces of string, we dealt a lot with queer trauma and homophobia, I wanted to write something that was sort of the antithesis of that and put positive LGBTQ plus stories into the world of MT. Um, so that's a song from that song cycle. And then talking of pieces of string, the final song is Standing in the Shadows, which is uh, the male quartet from that show. Um, and it's in the show, it's the first time the four gay male characters appear on stage together. They're in different time frames. There are two couples, one in the Second World War and one today. Uh, and the song is just all about them trying to understand and battle through their feelings about themselves and about each other. Wow. Wow. It's, it sounds like a perfect trio to kind of end on, especially because they're all from different shows, all from different contexts. And I've got to admit, the sculptor sounds incredible. Like the story behind that is just seems... Uh, unrealistic it's just ridiculous but incredible and not in there yeah for sure i wow well i i guess um we better we better hear these songs and just before we do i just want to say thank you gus really really thank you for 
allowing us to celebrate your music and obviously giving us your time. Abby, thank you. Obviously, it's always a pleasure to work with your lovely <laughs> self. And obviously, thank you to everyone else who has supported, who has taken part, all the performers, all the editors, all the musicians, um, all the viewers, everyone involved, because we wouldn't be here. The barn still would not be open without your help and support. Um, so without further ado, let's, uh, Abigail, would you do us the honor of- uh, The honors, yes. Yeah. So uh, the song's coming up. Um, I'll be singing The Sculptor. Then we have the wonderful Via Reggio by Jack Reitman. Then the beautiful Standing in the Shadows um, and singing this is Jay Perry, Ryan Carter, Stevenson Arden Sodje and Nushan Matthews. Pressed up against the glass We 
can't have gone much more than three stops, maybe four stops, when I notice them across the aisle. Two handsome men, all shades and style, and the world burst open right in front of me, shooting sparks of possibility. And I knew them, and they knew me, though we never met before. There was some kind of connection, a reflection of my core. And I was flushing red, though no one said a thing. I know they saw it too. And I whispered underneath my breath to the strangers on the train, I'm just like you. And I remember they were talking, they were smiling, they were so completely natural. And I was not like that at all. God, I was shy and I was clumsy, kind of awkward. There was something in the way they moved and something in the truth it proved. May the world burst open. My mother smiled and then she leaned a little closer and said, Don't they seem like lovely men? And I began to blush again as the world burst open right in front of me, shooting sparks of possibility, filling me with electricity. And I knew them and they knew like me and they were laughing they were lost but they didn't care they said well really what's the cost there's beauty everywhere you just need to find it and I knew them and they knew
that sun that doesn't shine Living in a world that isn't mine It isn't mine I'm trying to conceal the way I feel Hiding in a smile that isn't real It isn't real I'm looking at a sun I'm that doesn't shine the way I feel I am Nick Barstow and I'm the musical director of The World Goes Round, which is a candor and a review that has all of the songs that people know from stuff like Chicago and Cabaret. Maybe this time I'll be lucky. Maybe this time he'll stay. Tunes that you recognize and also maybe loads of the hidden gems that people maybe don't. It's a really, really fabulous piece. The trouble with a helter life we need. The nice thing about a review is you get to decide the individual story of every song. It's got a personal touch from everyone involved. The audience will feel like they're getting to know the performers a little bit as well as Kandra Neb. You can catch The World Goes Round from the 24th of August till the 5th of September right here at Barnfest. Happy.